so basically, once you've got this function, the rest is just very straightforward. It's however you want to actually solve the problem, re really. Uh, I mean, the, this code gets you the questions. So um, the way I'm going to do it, and obviously with programming, there are always loads and loads of different ways of doing the same thing. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to declare some variables which can be used in this function, but also outside of it if I want to. A bit like we used uh, dim for score and name in the in the PowerPoint, the VBA uh, quiz when we set that up. So, and and these are just going to be uh, the first uh, variable I'm just going to have is um, the text to display. So I'm just giving this variable a name and. I'm just going to say that it doesn't hold anything at the moment. It's just, and the reason for this is basically the text to display isn't always going to be well done. Sometimes it's going to be the correct answer depending on how somebody's answered or it's going to be well done. And it's going to be made up of at least three lines. So that's, that's one of the first variables. The other, the other variable I'm going to set up is uh, just one for all the answers really. So um, answers is going to be a new array. So I'm basically creating a data structure um, into which I'm going to put the answers. There are three answers, so I'm just going to say make me an array of three, and then I'm basically going to say what each one of these holds. So for example, my very first answer is going to be for the first question. So this is just typing in the correct answers. So this is a bit like saying A1 in a spreadsheet. So, uh, so the very first element of the array, remember it starts counting at zero, then goes one and then two. Um, so the very first element is going to just be, um, and I'll put this in, in uh, quotes, and the answer to that is uh, IP stands for um, internet protocol. Well, I think that's the answer. I can't quite remember what my questions are. Uh, so that's the, that's the very first one. And then I'm going to have answers uh, one. And what the answer to that one is going to be. And again, I'm going to put that in double quotes and then have a semicolon ending that. And then I'm going to have answers two. Okay, so the answer to my second question. And then I'm going to put that in double quotes and end it with a semicolon. So I'm just going to go and read what the, the questions are, actually, so that I can go and put the answers in. But um, I won't subject you to having to listen to, uh, uh, having to watch the typing going on. So I've just um, put my answers in um, uh, quotes, and I've numbered them to say, you know, this is answer one, answer two, answer three. But it doesn't really matter. Whatever you type in quotes is going to be uh, referenced. I've also then created another array uh, of just what the questions are, you know, Q1, Q2, Q3. You don't have to do it this way. There's always loads of different ways of solving the same problem in programming. I've just done it like this because then you can um, just sort of understand the function a little bit easier. I mean, you could just use the get elements command to get all of the, um, you know, names for the, the unique names for the radio buttons and you know, put them in an array, get it, get it to do the hard work for you. But I've just put those in, in here uh, so that we can use them. And then this text to display, obviously, uh, well, it might not be obvious, but we're going to use that here to say whatever you've, you know, we want text to display equal well done or we want it to equal this or we want it to equal that. So, um, and what this allows us to do now, or this particular way of doing it, I don't really need this, I might just delete it or move it out of the way or something. Uh, what this allows us to do is basically to say, okay, well, this, this function will check whatever we've, you know, typed in. And uh, we could check all of the questions by just using Q1, Q2, and Q3. So what I'm going to do, or, and this is one way of doing it, so there are many different ways of doing it, I'm just going to have a function which basically calls this checking function but uses these questions here. So that's, that's all this function is going to do. So maybe I'll, I'll call this check all, um, something like that. Uh, it's not, um, 
going to do anything very difficult. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, loop through each of the questions. So I'm going to say something like, uh, I'm just setting up my loop exactly like I did before. So you could just copy that code. It's just going to loop three times, but I'm just going to say um, I less than this time. I haven't got a variable. I can just say questions dot length, right? So to loop through all of the questions, just keep going um, while I is less than uh, questions dot length. You could have this as a separate variable declared first. It doesn't make much difference. And then I plus plus, or you could say I equals I plus one, which amounts to the same thing. And basically what it's going to do, so whatever it's going to do, I'm going to put in curly braces, is going to go away and call this function here, check QS. So check QS, and it's going to check QS with um, whatever is in Q I. So let's just make sure that this makes sense. So close the brackets and put a semicolon to end that statement. So this is basically saying, uh, go and have a look at Q I. So let's go and have a look at Q I. So for the first Q I starts with the value zero to start with, and then it's going to go one and two. Um, and then when it reaches three, it's basically not going to implement the loop. And um, questions, whoops, I shouldn't just say QI here. I need to say questions because that's the name of my array. Uh, so go and check Q, check QS. So go and call the function with whatever's in questions I. So it's going to say, go and call this function here with q1 then call it with q2 and then call it with q3 so it's just it's basically um looping through each one of these questions and each time it loops through the questions it goes and calls uh, check qs with whatever's in questions i questions um i plus one and then questions i plus one plus one again uh, so I need to change this function now to basically accept a value. So it needs to have some kind of variable that it accepts. Um, so let's call this, um, I don't know, it can, can be anything. I'm just going to type in the letter S here. And then this can also be S. So basically this is saying um, questions I, whatever that value is, is going to be represented by the letter S here. That's that's all that's that's doing. So um, so this function is going to accept Q um, one, Q two, Q three as a, a parameter here, and then this function will get called with Q one, Q two, and Q three because this will um, operate three times. I hope that makes sense, but. Uh, another thing to do now is because the uh, only this function is going to get called, so maybe if we just return this to Q1 to start with and just make sure that this still runs, so none of the code that you've written has actually broken the um, uh, you know the code that was already working. So if we renew this, uh, so let me just refresh this. And let's select the correct one. Okay, so that still works. So there are no new syntax errors were introduced. So if I just go back to my quiz code and change this to S so that all the different values can be uh, used. Okay, and then we'll make some more changes in the next video.